Hey guys, this is Candle, and uh, I told you Final Fantasy would be back soon enough. Alright, so, just to get this out of the way real quick, uh, last time I tried to do this, I got copyright uh, claimed, content ID claimed, during this FMV, so if you are seeing a black screen, or a still image, uh, that's why. I had to go back and re-edit this. Okay, so, uh, yes, it's finally time for Final Fantasy 3, and we are playing the... PC version, which Square Enix fixed and broke and fixed again. Okay, this was originally just a straight up port of the mobile version with the uh, mobile interface and uh, weird aspect ratio and everything uh, all in there. And uh, about a month ago, Square Enix decided to take this several year old, like six, seven year old, uh, actually more like, uh, yeah, six or seven year old. Uh, port and update it inexplicably they fixed pretty much every single issue I had with it they fixed the aspect ratio they fixed the interface the menu the battle system everything they even added a brand new auto battle feature which I think was present in the uh, PSP version I'm not sure but in the process they also they also broke a couple things uh, namely the text no longer stayed in text boxes like it should well, it turns out, just last week, Square Enix uh, put out another update for this game that fixed it. So I am so glad we can finally jump back into a Final Fantasy game, because uh, if they hadn't, then we'd be playing the PSP version, which be a little bit more pixelated on the FMV, and the text would be pixelated and everything, and uh, it just wouldn't work as well. But yes, we're back in here. This is the last of the NES games, although the NES version never arrived in the West. Uh, it was put, uh, released in 1989 in Japan, and uh, Final Fantasy 1 released in 1990 in the West, and uh, Final Fantasy 4, known as Final Fantasy 2, came out uh, a year or two after that. And, you know, they had gotten as far as prototyping an English translation for Final Fantasy 2, but scrapped it and canceled all plans to port or uh, to uh, localize Final Fantasy 3. Because, well, it was too late in the NES's lifespan. The, the Super Nintendo was on the horizon. So what we got instead was we got Final Fantasy IV as Final Fantasy II and Final Fantasy VI as Final Fantasy III. So this is not the same game as the Super Nintendo version. But this is, however, the 3D remake, which again is the only version ever released in the West. Uh, it was originally released on the Nintendo DS in 2006 around the same time as Final Fantasy XII uh, came out on the PS2. And it later got a port to the PSP that got a physical version in Japan, but was digital only outside of it. Uh, the physical version is, however, import friendly because the PSP is region free and it includes an English language option. That is the wrong button. All right. Uh, beyond that, it later got a port to the uh to mobile and from there a port to here and uh, we're going to go ahead and start a new game so there are some story changes uh, the original NES version had all four heroes start out together they did not have specific names ow I didn't see that hole there what have I gotten myself into now all right so yeah they didn't have set names or anything like that they were just called the onion kids you could name them whatever you wanted uh, that's why you, whenever you see a representative from Final Fantasy 3 in, uh, like, say, Dissidia, it's the Onion Knight, which is, like, the ultimate class in this game. And there are a number of other firsts for Final Fantasy as well. We have the uh, first instance of the job system. Uh, we have the first instance of summoning and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so, anyways, we'll get back into that later. Let's continue onward here. What have I got myself into this time? An orphan raised by Nina, an elder to Papa in the village of Ur. Adventurous by nature, his curiosity gets the better of him as he tumbles into a hole created by the Great Earthquake. His name is Luneth. That's his default name. I don't really like changing default names, so I won't change it, even though the original NES version did not have default names. And this actually kind of takes the best of the uh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 and kind of mashes them together. You have more of an expanded story. Uh, but you also have your your leveling system is very reminiscent of Final Fantasy 1. You even have Final Fantasy 1's uh, thingamabob uh, uh, magic system as well, uh, which we don't have right now. But you can see there it's organized into different levels as well. 
so oh, so much better that the way this looks now and you can just auto battle as well just hit the back button and it goes straight up to auto battle it runs a little bit faster but otherwise and honestly you don't even really need to do anything here because a lot of these battles really early on are pretty much just uh, press X to win so yeah, you start off the NES game with all four heroes, but this one, not so much. Just the one. You get the other three uh, within the first couple hours of the game. Those were monsters? Why do I get the feeling this is not the safest place to be? So yes, there are minor variances between all of the 3D versions. However, the, for the most part, they are pretty much the same in terms of actual content. It's pretty much just the interface that changes a bit. Like the DS version obviously had the, the second screen. So like all the battle commands took place down there. And you have like a, a mini map down there as well when you're exploring like this. But yes, everything looks perfect. It is amazing. Uh, previous to the last update, like e even the equipment thing would just trail off uh, beyond the, the thingamabob, beyond, beyond the, the text box. Uh, I am playing this game with the, the guide. It's the uh, official guide for the DS version. Like I said, all the content is going to be the same, so it's not really going to matter. But... Uh, where should we start? Where do we start? Okay, I know where we are. Okay, let's go up here. And I'm doing this mostly because I want to get as many of the treasure chests as I can. And there are some uh, secrets in this game. There, This is actually the first game to have proper side quests proper optional side quests. Final Fantasy 1 had technically two side quests, two optional side quests. You didn't have to get the class change uh, in that one, and you could also do the extra side quest in order to get the uh, the Adamant Titan and so on uh, to get uh, Excalibur. That was it. Uh, Final Fantasy 2 didn't originally have any side quests. Every like all the extra side quests, all the extra dungeons and everything in Final Fantasy 1 and 2 were added into the Game Boy Advance versions, which were then, you know, added and improved in the PSP versions, which is what we played. Um, so yes, we got a potion now. All right, and we have more here. Again, we're going to leave this on auto battle right now because it's not worth it to to run through the battles manually right now, and I am not going to be cutting out the random battles because that's like half the game <laughs> if I end up having to do like any massive amounts of grinding I'll cut that out but other than that this is it hmm there's something strange about that rock press uh, LB to study the screen carefully so basically you just want to zoom in and see something shiny all right and that opens up a secret passage channeling my inner HC Bailey all right, and we got something here. We got a long sword, which is going to help us out immeasurably. Do that instead of there. And actually, oh shoot, there's no... I thought there was an optimal. Okay, that's fine. I thought there was an optimal. Do I want the added defense or the added attack? We'll do the attack. So I, I like to dual wield in this game. There's really like no reason not to. Shields, I don't think, are really worth it. And I do have another confession, though. I have never actually properly beaten this game. Uh, about a year or two ago, I watched a Let's Play of the NES version. But I think the furthest I've ever gotten into this was maybe five or six hours. Uh, maybe at most ten on the DS version. I think I think I left the floating continent, and that was it was shortly after that that I kind of got stuck and never came back to it. So, that will be interesting. Uh, where am I going? Okay, over this way. So we got an Antarctic wind. And then we got something over here. Hey, we got a battle. Ooh, against new monsters. That's okay, they're, they're nothing really to worry about. I do want to watch my health, though. And you can always turn it back to manual if you want, pretty easily. But for most of these fights right now, we just leave it on auto battle. You know, it's not the same as, you know, like really breezing through but it does help out a little bit all right so we got a potion and we got some more monsters and yes again low poly 3d because it was a originally a ds game i don't even think they really like up the resolution on the textures or anything it, they just ported it up and up to the uh, resolution on the camera because i am playing in this at 1920 by 1080 aka 1080p 
and it is the full aspect ratio. Originally, you would have these teeny tiny thin black bars on either side. A wellspring. What mystifying colors. Alright, so wellsprings. There are two different types in the game. Some will restore your HP and MP. Some will just restore uh, your uh, MP, I think. But uh, some... Oh, sorry. No. You have... The normal wellsprings, which is what we have now, that's HP and MP restored, as well as uh, removing any status ailments. The other one is a revive wellspring, which actually brings your characters back from the dead, or, you know, from unconsciousness or whatever. Alright. So yeah, it's, it's not even really worth it. Actually playing through these encounters right now. Once we get the other characters, things will help out a little bit more, and we'll actually want control, direct control. But for now, I think we're alright. Alright, here we are. We're in the Crystal Chamber. Huh? What, what is all this? What, what's that? An evil creature attacks! Uh-oh. Okay, we actually want control over this. Alright. We definitely want control over this. I did not mean to do that. Oof. I didn't get there quick enough. Alright, uh, this is purely turn-based. You set up all your characters' uh, attacks, and then you get to watch it all play out all at once. Uh, this one, you actually do want to use your Antarctic Winds. I tend not to use items like this in these games. They aren't really all that useful. But early in the game here, that's like the best we can do. Thankfully, we do have some potions as well, so that will help. Alright. Wow, that is like really blowing out the audio. Hold on a second. That's a little bit better. But it's like really blowing out the audio. There we go. Hopefully that's better for you guys. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyways, I used my Antarctic Winds. I think I can... Yeah, just do a straight-up attack here. There we go. Got a critical hit. Perfect. And that actually beat him. So that was our first boss fight. All right. 500 gil, 20 experience. Got a job level increase. So yeah, we have uh, character levels and job levels. Sorry, I didn't need to leave my cursor in there. All right, Luneth. You have been chosen. Oh, I have to actually advance that. <laughs> but who's that? Who's there? Warrior from the land of darkness. You have been chosen as the bringer of hope. So yeah, that's an interesting twist. We don't have warriors of light this time. We have the warriors of darkness. Is this crystal talking to me? Darkness is threatening to engulf the world. When light is lost, the equilibrium will be no more. Wh what are you talking about? There are others who share your destiny. You must seek them out. Once you find them, I will bestow upon you our last light, our last hope. Now go. Well, wait, I don't understand. So yeah, that's a, a difference here from the original NES version because originally you would have all four characters already to start out with, uh, kind of to call back to uh, Final Fantasy 1. And you would get your starting uh, classes right now, your starting jobs right now. But this is going to wait a little bit. You got to fill out your freelancer role for a little bit. And now... Luneth has appeared elsewhere. I'm back on the surface. What was that? Light? Darkness? Our last hope? What was that all about? Alright, so now we have the world map here, and we can actually take a look at it. 
It is a fairly small world map, but it will get bigger. This is what is known as the... Actually, no, this is a single continent on the floating continent. It's more like an island, and it is kind of really small. I mean, already, just take a look at where we are and where we came from. You can see the icon for the, the cave we just left right there. So it is kind of really small. But we have the town of Ur here. This is our hometown. Hi, Luneth. The others went over to the corner of town. I wonder what the hubbub's all about. King Sassoon's castle is to the west of here. He is the lord of all the lands surrounded by the Parmini Mountains, including this village. Luneth, the elders are looking for you. It's said that those blessed by the crystal's light can regain their health and even revive themselves by drinking wellspring water. Well, uh, we've already started doing that, so that's good at least. So you're leaving Ur, eh? The whole town's talking about it. Take the potions in that well with you. Why are you storing potions in the well? I mean, I guess the well is kind of dried up a bit, but seriously, why are you storing potions in the well? That makes like zero sense. I wouldn't think a well is a good storehouse. Either way. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Wanted to go around. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, I can't get out back this way. Okay, in that case, we'll go here. Uh, so, your item shop is actually located inside your inn, believe it or not. But we don't really need to buy anything right now. I hear you're going on a journey. You're free to stay here anytime. Now, you'd better rest up for what lies ahead. Wait, how, how did you know I'm going on a journey? Who, who told you that? Seriously, who told you that? We also have a tavern in here as well. Why, hello there, Luneth. Watch me dance. Um, okay. That is an curious dance. Um, I'm not sure what to say about it. <laughs> All right, and if you're going on a journey, you have to take some antidotes and eye drops. Who says? Ah, eh, we can play the piano. Awesome. Alright. How was that? Eh, screw you two. Uh, I just love the fact that these bar stools are, are clearly mapped into the floor themselves. Like, they're not really here. Hey, would you play me a song on the piano? I just did and y'all booed me. Stupid earthquake. I can't get back to Canaan because a huge stupid rock is now blocking the entrance through Nell Valley. Can I talk to you? No, no, apparently I cannot. Okay. Uh, what about upstairs? Is there anything upstairs here that I want? Or people to talk to? Let me tell you about your current job. Freelancers can use low-level magic, but their base attri attributes are pretty low. <laughs> yeah, that guy's sleeping. Uh Oh, it's free to rest. Interesting. Okay. Maybe it's because it's our hometown. All right, and we should get a cutscene up this way. Yes, we go. Oh yeah? Ghosts don't exist? Then go there yourself and prove it. Ha, huh, you don't have the guts. You're a coward. Another orphan raised by Topapa and Luneth's best friend. Unlike Luneth, he prefers reading over gambling in the wild. His studies endow him with great knowledge that more than makes up for his shyness. And his name is Ark. Hey Ark, what's going on? It's Luneth! Let's get out of here! So apparently Luneth's got a bit of a reputation. But Ark ain't having none of it. Hey, wait, Ark, you don't have to run away from me. I'm not a coward, but I know I have to be stronger. But I can't ask for Luneth's help. I'll show them. Yeah, we'll see about that. All right, so up here, there is actually an invisible item somewhere. There we go. Found a potion. So yes, this game does, in fact, have invisible items, which really kind of sucks. 
which makes me glad I have the uh, map. I didn't believe in spooks until I saw one in Kazas. All right, we also have a weapon shop, but we're not going to go in there quite yet. You can take the items in the storehouse up ahead. They should help you on your journey. Watch out for monsters, though. I don't think there's monsters in the storehouse, but there are monsters around it. And there is actually another hidden potion around here, and we are going to go back to auto battle. Thank you, because that was, like, really, really quick. <laughs> All right. That will help speed things along. So somewhere around here. There we go. Found another potion. And the storehouse in here has some other stuff. There are switches that open hidden passageways in towns and dungeons. You'll have to look closely to find them. Take a look at that candle, for example. Why, thank you. I, I, I know I'm very attractive. Anyways, if you zoom in close enough... It sparkles. Yeah, I see it. See that shining spot? Those sparkles tell you there's something fishy there. Well, hey, what are you trying to say? All right, we also have uh, items inside these pots. So we got a couple antidotes. And let's go ahead and touch the candle. And that opens up the rest of the storeroom. And there is stuff up top here as well. Like a shit ton of stuff. It's, uh, we got a cure spell. We have eye drops. We have a long sword. A dagger. And a phoenix down. Okay, so we're going to change some things up here. Uh, well, let's replace that knife with the other long sword. I uh, don't have anything here. All right, so that's the best we can do there. Now, to explain the magic system, it works kind of like Dungeons & Dragons, where uh, spells are organized in different levels based on their power. And you have a certain number of charges for each spell level. So as you can see here, we can currently cast a level 1 spell twice. And that's all we can do right now. And uh, it works pretty much the same, exact same as the original Final Fantasy 1 thing. Even uh, to the fact that you can only equip three spells per level. However, you can uh, remove them, unequip them, and re-equip them very easily uh, this time around. And you can even exchange them between characters if you want. But right now, we're going to have Cure set up. Thank you very much. And I think that's it for big stuff in this town. Uh, yeah, we can go to the weapon and armor shop still. Alright, I already talked to you, I'm pretty sure. What's important in battle? Know that you can press and hold right bumper to escape. Also, if you don't see all your commands, move the cursor up or down to display them. You can also switch to auto battle by pressing back. It's pretty useful, so give it a try. But be careful, all it will do is repeat the previous action, so press back again to deactivate it if you're in trouble. Alright, so we do want to buy up some things here. We want to get some leather army. Let's go ahead and get two of those. And a couple leather caps and a couple bronze bracers. And we're going to go ahead and sell off... Actually, we're not going to sell off anything right now. Because we want to equip this stuff. I thought I had something to sell off. I don't. Alright, that's going to be fine for now. I wanted some stuff for Ark as well. Because we are going to get him in our party soon enough. Ark was being bullied again? For you two being brought up together, you should look after him more. Well... Fuck you, old lady. Alright, we can buy poison on now as well. I think we can find that in the wild, so I'm not really going to bother buying that right now. I might come back and buy it later. Where did Art go? I can't seem to find him. I thought you would know, seeing how you two are like brothers and all. Technically, they kind of are brothers, um, since they were both raised by the same people. But they are both orphans, so... I heard that someone put a curse on the whole town of Kazas. I'm not going anywhere near that place. Unfortunately, we will have to. <laughs> Alright, so here you have a... Yeah, that's the Revive Wellspring. And then over here you also have an HPMP Wellspring. There we go. Alright. Yeah, there's no more items in the town here. Elder Don says... 
I can sense what has happened to you. You must now heed the words of Elder Topapa. And of course, Topapa is our papa. Alright. You have come, Luneth. So it is you who has been chosen. You must understand that your meeting with the crystal was not happenstance. It was the crystal's will. You have been chosen. Chosen? For what? I don't understand. A long time ago, a traveler came to me carrying a newborn child. His face was covered in soot, and his clothes were burnt to tatters. The child he carried in his arms was you. To think, even as a newborn, you were already destined to be chosen by the crystal. You must now set forth on your journey. Take your power, the light you hold in your heart, and use it well. Alright, what about you? Luneth, you must treat Nina, your mother, the very best you can. You must know by now that she is not your birth mother, but she has taken care of you as if she truly were. 